The Q5 is plagued by the problem of many of its peers from the Volkswagen Group. The paintwork does not hold well to the body, and for any reason peels off in flakes, exposing the zinc layer. Over time, it gives in, opening the way to corrosion. Accordingly, chips appear quite often. It is advisable to quickly repair them. Fortunately, most cars are still quite expensive. Their owners usually have the desire and ability to avoid such cases and maintain the paintwork in order. Still, when inspecting a used Q5, the body should be given the closest attention. Moreover, this applies not only to the outer panels, but also to the bottom arches, sills, power elements, everything that is not covered with plastic covers or shields and is accessible for inspection. Unfortunately, this model is difficult to classify as excellent in corrosion resistance, and restoration repairs will be expensive. Along the way, it is worth paying attention to the condition of chrome parts, which do not tolerate our road, pickles, well. And also don't forget about the headlights. On the Q5 they often sweat, profusely due to micro cracks caused by a not very successful design. Most likely, it is the abundance of moisture inside that leads to failure of the LED optics. Another known weak point concerns versions with a keyless entry system. Door handles have a short service life and require replacement. A panoramic roof with a sunroof is an additional risk factor. Early versions of the Q5 were marked by cases of its destruction. Later the problem was solved, but questions remain related to the operation of the drainage system as well as the tightness of the seals. So this part of the body should be given special attention. The rich equipment in the Q5 is more a minus than a plus. Failures in the operation of the same electric drives or heated seats occurred. There were complaints about glitches of the multimedia system and other equipment. With age, the likelihood of problems only increases. But even the oldest examples usually have a well-preserved interior. Still, we should pay tribute to the quality of the materials used and the care of assembly. The most popular gasoline versions of the Q5 were equipped with 2.0 TFSI engines, 180 to 230 horsepower, and in cars of the early years of production, these were precisely the same, poor, engines of the EA888 Gen 2 family, which were noted for the greatest number of problems. The most serious of them is progressive oil burn due to poor piston design. Adding to the hassle is a faulty PCV valve of the crankcase ventilation system. I have good news for you. Now, if you are planning to buy a used car or learn more about your car, you no longer need to search for the information you need on the internet. We have collected everything in one place for you on the website carmi.pro. Here you can find out everything about the car, what brakes and at what mileage, any problems with engines, chassis or gearboxes, which trim levels are better not to mess with and how not to lose money buying a used car. You will learn all this on Carm.pro. In addition to this, the timing chain drive turned out to be short-lived sometimes replacement was required up to 100,000 kilometers, and often the cause of the problems was a faulty hydraulic chain tensioner. Other disadvantages include a capricious ignition system, not the most reliable cooling system, and an injection pump that is quite sensitive to fuel quality. The engines have been modified several times, and the most successful are considered to be the engines produced since 2014. So you should approach the purchase of a 2.0 liter gasoline version with caution. It is better to give preference to Gen 3 engines, which were installed after restyling. V6 engines were also installed on gasoline Q5S, before restyling naturally aspirated 3.2 FSI, 270 horsepower, after compressor 3.0 TFSI, 272 horsepower, and in the SQ5 version 354 horsepower. They are free of problems with oil leakage, but an expensive chain drive cannot be called eternal. Well, the main risk factor is the disposable elusive coating of the block. And don't forget about generally more expensive maintenance and higher fuel consumption than with four-cylinder engines. This is all to say that diesel versions look more preferable. Moreover, it is better to look towards the four-cylinder 2.0 TDI. Before restyling, engines of the A189 family 
149 and 170 horsepower, were installed, after EA-288, 150 to 190 horsepower. We can recommend both, old, units, they are simpler, but for the most part they are already aged and have significant mileage, and the earliest ones potentially still have a problem with the wear of the hexagon in the oil pump drive, and new, ones, they are more complex. But the questions mainly concern operation of the diesel particulate filter and EGR system. There was also a 3.0 TDI engine in the lineup, which in regular versions developed 240 to 258 horsepower, and in the SQ5 it produced up to 340 horsepower. Compared to petrol versions, the engine is reliable, but still not as good as the 2.0 liter diesel. This is especially true for early versions before 2010, where problems were noted with the injection pump, it began to drive chips, simultaneously, killing, the injectors, and the swirl flaps in the intake tract often failed. Unlike its, younger, brother, this engine has a timing chain drive, which has a much longer lifespan than gasoline engines, but replacing it does not promise to be cheap. A six-speed manual transmission is rare, but it fully corresponds to the stereotype. The simpler the better. However, don't forget about the dual mass flywheel, which greatly increases the cost of replacing the clutch. Depending on the year of manufacture and the engine, the Q5 was equipped with a six or eight speed automatic transmission manufactured by ZF or a seven speed S-Tronic robot. This designation hides the DL501 gearbox, which we talked about not long ago. Let us briefly recall. These robots of the first years of production were marked by premature wear of the oil pump. The gear part turned out to be insufficiently strong. In particular, cases of premature failure of bearings were noted, and ignoring the problem leads to the fact that their seats are broken. Later versions are considered more reliable, but they are still demanding on the purity of the oil, which quickly becomes contaminated with friction wear products. So timely maintenance is one of the main conditions for the longevity of this robot. The six-speed automatic transmission, which was installed with the 3.2-liter gasoline engine, also suffers from dirty oil. The consequences for the valve body are no less dire. In this regard, the modern eight-speed gearbox looks more successful, but it will also cost more to repair, if anything. The situation is aggravated by the fact that automatic transmissions come in conjunction with powerful engines which provoke an aggressive driving style with all that it entails. But even dashing, riders, are unlikely to be able to cause serious damage to the Quattro all-wheel drive transmission according to good tradition, it is very hardy and durable. Like platform passenger cars, the Q5 has a multi-link suspension at both the front and rear. Refilling, one is not a cheap task, despite the fact that the mileage of the same levers is average although usually more than that of the same shock absorbers or wheel bearings. However, a lot depends on the size of the tires and the accuracy of the owners. But in any case, maintaining the suspension in good condition can be expensive, especially if you don't skimp on the quality of spare parts. There are also some nuances in the steering. Before restyling, cars were equipped with a rack with power steering it can tap and leak, requiring restoration repairs. Modernized cars are equipped with an electric amplifier, which is generally considered more reliable, but by no means flawless, and the cost of repairing such a rack turns out to be noticeably higher. The first-generation Audi Q5 can hardly be called an eternal or durable car. It has too many vulnerable and weak points, starting from the body and ending with the main units. Perhaps, with a careful and meticulous owner, a German crossover can last a long time, but its maintenance is unlikely to be cheap, and in the case of older, that is, not so expensive, copies, the cost of maintenance is already important. If you try to save money or let the machine work, it will end up being either expensive or unreliable.